walk through the steps necessary to get the firmware image and boot code updated on this Cisco small business switch. It's an SG352, and it's pretty straightforward. You're going to need access to the web interface and a TFTP server, as well as downloading the software for this particular switch. It's an SG300 or a 500 or whatever it is you have. And once you have all those pieces compiled, log in, go to administration, and then file management, and then upgrade backup firmware. Now you'll notice HTTP is not going to work here because the only thing we can upgrade is the firmware image and not the boot code, so that won't work. So change over to TFTP, gives you a few more options here. I'm going to start by upgrading the firmware image. So to do that, make sure you have a TFTP server of some sort running. I'm using TFTP D64, it's a lightweight, free, kind of open sourcey thing. And I've pointed it to where I've extracted both the firmware image and boot code. So if I've got that browsing path there, and if I do a show directory, we can see it contain two files. One has the word boot, that's the boot code. The other one has an FW, that's the firmware image. So we're gonna start with the firmware image. I'll simply select that, hit copy, and close this window. And I can paste that in here, which is kind of nice. So that's the file name that we want for the firmware. Then I put in the IP address for my workstation. And at that point I can apply and it'll go in and grab that particular file. Now once it's done, it's downloaded the firmware image, but it's not applied it yet. We're gonna wanna grab the boot code. So you'd repeat the same process. You'd select boot code instead. I'd go to my TFTP server and grab the file name for the boot code. And I know they're not the same number there. I've downloaded the firmware 14088, which was the latest at the time of the download. It came with boot code that's a little bit out of date from that, but that's just the way it is. There's no better boot code than this at this particular time. So let me copy the boot code file here with a copy. I then put in my IP address and that file name again. It would grab that RFB file. Once it's been grabbed, we're going to need to do one more step, and that's under the active image. You'd have a new item on your dropdown. Now, I'm using 14088 already. I started with 13558. So really all I did was I changed this to a 14088. Hit apply. And once you reboot, it's going to use both your new boot code and your firmware image. And you can check that by looking here. It says that it's using image number two. The active image is the 14088. Also, if I go to my status page, my system summary here, we can see all sorts of information about the firmware that's active and the boot code that's active. So right here we can see the active image for firmware is 14088, and the boot version is the 13506. Don't miss out on my future videos. Become a YouTube subscriber today. Do you crave more content on home labs, technical certifications, deep dives, product reviews, and geeky shenanigans? Wall Network is also available in blog format at wallnetwork.com.